पदार्थम जानी नाद्यापि भगवान स्फुट अहम ब्रमेति वाक्या प्रतिपाद्ये कथ वद The disciple said, "Not even the word meaning do I fully grasp clearly. How can I then comprehend the significance of the sentence, 'I am Brahman'?" Satya Mahabhavanatra Vijnanam Naiva Vidyate He Tu Padartha Bodho He. The teacher said, "You have said the truth when you complained that the knowledge and understanding of the meaning of the words employed in a sentence are indeed the cause of the understanding of the full significance of the sentence, and there are no two opinions about it." Namaste. So these are the two most important verses in the Vakya Vritti yet. And they really set the tone for the whole rest of the book. They are the final two verses in the introductory section. And this is really the theme of Vakya Vritti. Vakya means what is said. And Vritti is the meaning or the practical application now i have been saying since the 1950s that nobody knows what they're talking about what to speak of what other people are talking about because they don't know the definitions of the words it's so simple If you can recite the definition you know what the word means and if you can't you don't it's so simple so direct and so straightforward yet people are in a hypnotic trance going through life hearing and using words that they have no idea what the definition is this is madness this is insanity when i was a kid 4 or 5 years old like that i used to read the dictionary i mean actually i never stopped but i began around that age 5 to 7 years old reading the dictionary because i wanted to know what's the meaning of these words People are using these words in all kinds of crazy ways. But what do they actually mean? So, I became a specialist in the meanings of the words. And I used to correct everybody, oh, this people hated me for this. Even my teachers, when they would use a word incorrectly, I would call them out on it and I would quote from the dictionary that the teachers gave us that look you're using this word wrong and i was always right and they hated me and i got in a lot of trouble because of it because of being critical of these unqualified teachers what are they doing simply piling on misunderstood terms faster than you can look them up and define them and because we keep emotional charge in the subconscious mind from hearing what to speak of using misunderstood terms and remember the definition of a misunderstood term is one that you don't know the definition for so if you can't recite the definition it's misunderstood even you know by chance you use it correctly it's just imitation we hear other people saying stuff and we repeat it like a parrot so as you can tell 
This is one of my pet peeves. <laughs> I really freak out over this because it's so common and so deeply embedded in human society all over the world. And yet no one that I have ever met can recognize it, can see it, can perceive it. Why? Because they haven't read the dictionary. They haven't gone through and defined all the words they are using. So when they hear a word that's misdefined or used incorrectly or that they don't know the meaning of, they simply assume that they know it. It's like a hypnotic trance. It's like you will assume that every word you hear is understood and known and that you are using it correctly. And this is caused by so-called education. Actually, it's miseducation. It's the opposite of education. Because it's training people, actually hypnotizing people by making them sit on hard wooden seats at a time in their life when they really need to be outside and running around and making them hear misunderstood terms from an authority who can hold them responsible for repeating them on a test, for example or raising your hand in the classroom. And if you're wrong, then you get a bad grade. And then of course your parents are gonna be on your case and everything. So what really is school? It's a way of training you to not know what you or anybody else is talking about. And at the same time, hold you responsible for learning all this stuff. And if you can't uh, just repeat it back on a test, you fail. So what a school diploma really is, is a certification that you will carry on the tradition of being in the hypnotic trance of not knowing what anybody is talking about including yourself, and that you can be trusted if given any power or position not to blow the cover off of this completely society-wide epidemic of insanity. So this is what I live with every single day and every year of my life since I was a little bitty thing. That everybody around me is using language that they don't understand and hearing language that they don't understand, used by people who don't understand it. And yet nobody recognizes the fact. And here on the channel, I did a series more than 10 years ago called Becoming Genius. All you have to do to become a genius is to look up all the words and learn the definitions. Then you can read anything and straight away apply it without any trial and error. You can take a technical manual and read it and then immediately put it down and do whatever that manual is talking about. Or a book on science, or psychology, or enlightenment. So there are all these scriptures, all these books about spiritual life, all these uh, great sources of information written by very wise people thousands of years ago when people were much smarter than they are today. And what's happening? People are reading these books, misunderstanding the meaning, and as a result, failing to apply the knowledge. So here we have the greatest secret of existence. Tatvama si, thou art that, Brahman. 
Why don't people become enlightened the instant they hear this? Because they don't understand the meaning of the words. So it was really extraordinary when I read this, that this disciple is extremely intelligent. I bet it's Shankaracharya talking about himself. Because if you read his writings, his understanding is so clear and so precise and so deep that there's no way that any opponent could ever, you know, defeat him. And he explains things in, with great lucidity, making it absolutely clear. If you know the definitions of the terms, if you don't, it's just another book to read and goes in one ear and out the other, and you don't even remember what you read the next day, what to speak of being able to apply it. This is the disease. See, this is one of the greatest symptoms of insanity in the world today. And nobody recognizes it. And very, very few people, only the most mature and most intelligent people, are even ready to admit that it exists. So this is the problem. And for me, every day, it's been this nightmare of walking through this world where nobody knows what they're saying or what anybody else is saying. And it's really funny, especially here on a, a an island, you know, in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> where very few people speak good English, going shopping or something like that, and trying to make myself understood well, what I want. Huh? And it always turns out that I want something that nobody has ever heard of. <laughs> what was it the other day? Oh, yeah. I wanted to get a metal ring that goes on the stove and then you put your wok, you know, your frying pan, an Eastern frying pan. It's called a wok. It's got a curved bottom, not a flat bottom. So if you put it on the stove directly, it tends to slide around. But the professionals, you have a ring, a metal ring that they put over the stove burner and then put the wok on that. Problem solved. But here, nobody has ever heard of it and trying to describe it. to I mean, I literally had to draw a picture <laughs> to describe it to the salesman in the professional uh, kitchen store where all the restaurants and all the, you know, hotels and like that buy their equipment. And this guy's never heard of it. So it's wild. And it's the same thing when we're talking about enlightenment. Nobody has ever heard of these things before. Or if they heard them, it went in one ear and out the other because they didn't understand the words. They didn't know the meaning of the terms. They could not recite the definition of the words. So it didn't mean anything to them. So here is the greatest secret in the universe being plainly stated in three words, thou art that. But nobody gets it, and so nobody becomes enlightened. But they believe they understand it, and so they go off and create a whole false religion, neo adwaita based on their misunderstanding of the terms. And thus the world keeps going round and round, huh? Go back, Jack, do it again. <laughs> because you didn't get it, even when you were told. Now, I've tried in my teaching and working with students to get them to look up their words. And they never do. Because they don't believe that the cause of their not getting enlightened is not knowing the definitions. They don't believe it. They don't believe me. Even though I'm the example of a person 
who does know the definitions and who can do anything just by reading about it. And I've demonstrated it hundreds of times. So, you know, the ball is in your court. If you want, you can go look up our series on Becoming Genius and you can go through it and do the exercises and do the work and learn the definitions. And then you can read Shankaracharya and actually get it. Aung Tat Sat, Aung Shakti Aung, Aung Namah Shivaya.